Hey guys, this is Canfree15. I am back at it with another video for you guys, and we are back with some more One Piece anime episode reviews. And this week, it kind of talks really mostly about the nine red scabbards, well, finally being the nine red scabbards, and two, showing how they matured into being the scabbards I guess they are today when it comes to following Odin. And this is One Piece anime episode in 962. Let's get into this episode. Now, where we last left off, um, obviously we had Odin go up to Curry to confront Ashur Doji to essentially take him out and free the land of Curry. And we see this all happening. And one, we find out that Odin looks like he's very skilled in using Rio, which isn't shocking with how much or how strong he is. Um, so, one, he's able to blow away Ashura Doji's men like easily, and he gets into a huge out brawl with Ashura Doji. And by the time the Nine Red Scab, well, the scabbards um, that are in his little, you know, ought, his little freaking, I guess, I guess you can say, is roaming around gang, um, you know, they just show up, and obviously Odin has won, and he's literally sitting on Ashura Doji, and the dude's got like freaking arrows in his back and everything and stuff like that and he just finished up with his finished up being ashra doji now the thing we find out is ashra doji is still alive and essentially he's asking odin to kill him but odin's like i'm not gonna kill you like that and he asked his he asked the people following him kinemon and the others like if they love him and if they do um use their wisdom um help him with their wisdom and strength because He's gonna plan on making the bandits serve under him as like their king, essentially, which we see later. And we see, you know, as a few days pass, we see that Odin turned um, the Curry region, which was a very, I guess you can say, funny enough, the Compton or anyway, the slums of Wano, essentially into a very beautiful looking place to live in. And he had other people come to live in. And then when his dad heard about it, Sukuyaki, he essentially took off the ban he had in terms of, you know, kicking him out of the family and obviously the dis the disownal and stuff like that from the flower capital. And he made them me he made him the daimyo of the curry region, which we already knew from what Kinemon told us in the present timeline a few weeks ago and stuff like that. Um two, um, he does ask the scabbards at the time, um, if they can become his samurai, essentially, again, like I said, his nine red scabbards, his retainers, everything. Anyways, we get a six year time skip, which is 33 days before the present day. And we find out some world information during this time. We hear the facts um, because we also heard the rocks pirates backstory. We hear the remnants of the rocks pirates have disbanded and stuff like that. Anyways, it comes over to a scene on the beach, the same beach where Luffy, Big Mom, Every character that's washed up into Wano is there. And we see that this time in the flashback, um, six years ago, um, not six years ago, um, I believe it was like 30, 35, 30 something years. It was, so, it was something in that 30, some, it was something in that thing. But we see this time it's Kamatatsu, Inorarashi, and Nekomamushi that are the people washed up on the shore. And you know, they're all washed up and knocked out and stuff like that. We know that, you know, in our Rashi and Nikamamushi are meeks and everything. And we see what happens with these three is eventually they're essentially hanged to these pipes and they're trying to get burned alive. Luckily, Odin was there in the area and eventually saved them. And, you know, because of it, they're essentially indebted to him because they saved him. And it was a funny little scene of the fact that when they're trying to eat, Nekomamushi can't freaking eat. Um, the freaking food because he has a very sensitive tongue and stuff like that. And that's when he gets so upset, he, he rolls over like the, you know, the ball that they had. And that's when we get more understanding about Kawamatatsu. The one thing we find about Kawamatatsu is we find out he's not actually a Kappa. We find out his real race is, which some people probably predicted it, which it is, we find out that his real race is he's actually a fishman because he gives his backstory. He says, when um, him and his mom were on over on shore on a boat sailing out to sea. Um, they essentially got washed ashore in Tawano, and when they were asking for help from other people, people just didn't like him, and they were throwing rocks and everything. Eventually, one of the rocks, I guess, connected 
um, with Kyle Matatsu's mother and hits her in a pretty critical spot. And essentially in her dying breaths, she tells Kyle Matatsu, listen, you know, we're fishmen and we're ostracized and we're obviously discriminated because human people do not like us. So instead of calling yourself a fishman, um, take the name of you calling yourself a Kappa. So he goes by the name Kappa. It's the same thing like Kiku, how she identifies herself. Even though she's a dude, she morally identifies herself um, as a female, um, as a she. It's the same thing like this, you know, Kao Matasu, he's a fishman, but he identifies himself as a Kappa. Um, so again, just like I said with Kiku all those weeks ago, I'm going to still call him a Kappa. But I knew like it makes com complete sense that he would be a fishman because he's got the web feet like most fishmen do. Um, so yeah, um, eventually, um, you know, what I found hilarious, like after hearing this, Odin's like, okay, eat as much as you like and then leave. And then he's like, thank you for coming. And then, you know, you have this funny scene where they're all like, huh? And he's like, okay, go on your merry way. And go, go enjoy your lives. And they're like, oh no, we're staying here. And they essentially force Odin to keep him. Odin's like, okay, fine, geez, well, you can stay and stuff like that. So yeah. Now, another thing we hear is um, Denjiro also tells Odin um, that he can't lend Orochi money because we find out that Odin was, I guess, giving money to Orochi. And essentially, Denjiro is like, you can't do that under my permission and stuff like that because he says Orochi is a scumbag, which, yeah, we know today he's a huge scumbag and stuff like that. So, yeah. Now what happens to try to get the money back, Ryo's on the other scab, the other nine scabbards try to steal the money back, but that's when this, that was the same scene we saw early in the flash, earlier back when they were focusing on Yasui when he was still alive in the present timeline. Um, when, you know, Yasui is like, okay, fine, you can have the money, but you gotta promise me one thing. You know, you gotta freaking have, you gotta be better. You have to have to the point where Odin actually sees you. You're under Odin, the Daimyo of Curry. You need to carry yourselves with dignity and respect. You can't be these people. You got to live up to what Odin has you, what ha or what Odin, you know, put you in the spot to do and stuff like that. And he says, listen, educate yourself better. So when you see this whole training montage where they're essentially learning all this stuff, like reading books and everything, you know, they're training to be stronger samurais and everything. It was it was really nice. And the animation, especially in the training fighting stuff, was really freaking good. So it goes to show you that these people really took what Yasui told them and took it to heart. Again, we know that Yasui was very well respected back in his heyday and stuff like that. So then we get another time skip, which is three years later and essentially 30 years before the present time. So this is 30 years before what's currently going on in the storyline. Um, we see this is the first time Odin's coming back to the flower capital. And I'm guessing those years, those 11 years he was away and he's meeting up with his dad. And essentially the thing that, you know, people were saying, People in the flower couple are saying, well, yo, watch out. They might take his wife, he might take your wives. And also, you know, his scabbards, they're also, you know, bums and sleazeball too. But then they realize as they're walking through the flower capital, they see how freaking respectful and how professional the nine scabbards are. And I like the way that you have the music and everything. The music was great in this scene. Um, and they look like dudes who are presentable for somebody who rules over our region. You know, that, that obviously makes the people very much well respect Odin even more. And they you have some people saying like, bro, these dudes are actually cool as shit. Um, so yeah. Anyways, when Odin starts talking to his father, we find some background information as Odin's kind of going through some stories he's telling his dad. We find out that Odin's dad, Sukuyaki, actually came down with an illness. And sadly, that will be the last time he ever talked to his father. But the interesting point is Orochi, um, they pan over to Orochi and we see a much older Orochi in the quarters of the um, of the Shogun. So that definitely is leading up and it's definitely giving some mentions. Okay, he was in the Shogun's little palace area. The question is, how did he rise to freaking power? We're gonna have to find that as the weeks to come in the backstory and stuff like that so yeah now the last like 
10 seconds of the episode essentially discusses Whitebeard, which we finally see Whitebeard for the first time, I guess in vain of him talking again, from what I can remember, since the Marine Ford arc. And we see a younger Edward Newgate, essentially, we see his pirate crew washed ashore on Wano saying that their ship is essentially devastated. The, um, it's gonna take a week for them to build their ship. I forgot what their ship was called again. Um, so yeah, um, that's that all that happens. And we also see a much younger Marco. He doesn't have like a goatee or anything. Also at this time, he's an apprentice on Whitebeard's ship and stuff like that. And that's where the episode ends off seeing Edward Newgate, AKA Whitebeard um, on Wano. Next week, it seems like we're going to get a fight between Odin and Whitebeard as well. It looks like Odin's going to try to have Whitebeard take him on his crew to go out and set sail to sea. But it was a good episode. Um, very much well developed the nine red scabbers to show who they are. Also, too, Kinemon, you know, when they finally came, arrived back into the flower capital, he changed his hair color to black instead of it being gold again. So, yeah, I wonder if they're also going to dive into how... Um, um, Suru fell in love with Kinemon because they did show Suru um, in this episode as she was admiring the fact about what Odin and Kinemon were doing with Curry and stuff like that. So I wonder in his time back in the Flower Capital if he found her and you know maybe he took her back to Curry and eventually I guess you can say married her. So yeah, I hope they show that. But again, it's fun if they don't. But it's nice to see. Anyways, guys, that's all I got. I, I, that's all I have for this episode. So, yeah, anyways, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Hopefully, you guys have a great rest of your day or night when you check out this video. Like the video if you liked the video. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's One Piece episode, as well as hit that subscribe button if you want to get more One Piece content going for it. Anyways, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully, you guys um, have a great rest of your evening, um, as well as I'll see you guys on the next video. Still then, guys, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.